Hey everyone, Christina here. It's been another couple of days, but uh, today is a Japanese national holiday, so I have the day off from work. Uh, you wouldn't be able to tell from the lack of light coming from either window, but it is mid-afternoon here. Uh, the weather looks a little foreboding. It's, uh, I think we're in the rainy season. It's, it's been raining on and off for the last couple weeks. There's been a couple typhoons. Uh, not, not really looking forward to what the weather may have in store for, for us today, but what I am looking forward to is the next episode of Carmilla Season 3. Mostly because uh, some of you have expressed some excitement about my reaction to said episode. Which means, probably means, that something really, really good is going to happen. Or something really, really bad. But I, I have faith that uh, most of you are not complete sadists who enjoy watching my pain. So we're going to assume something good is going to happen. So here we go with uh, Carmilla Season 3, Episode 12, Memory Lane. All right. About a year ago, I put my journalism project up online because my roommate was missing and, unbelievably enough, the trailer. I'm doing it again. With JP and the library's help, Laugh thinks we can get one blast through the firewall, so we're broadcasting everything we've recorded over the last few days because you mm. need to know what's going on. The Dean of Silas is some kind of ancient, unkillable, seriously evil thing. She's possessed my former Flordon and is using the student body as slave labor to open the gates of hell. Here's as we can tell, she's got four open already, and when she opens the seventh, it's going to unleash, well, hell, which, from everything we know, is going to be immediately bad for Silas and shortly thereafter the planet. When I put up that first vlog, I didn't know if anyone could help. But if you're out there, if there's anything you can do, help us with the weird non sumerian symbols we can't translate, loan us a secret wand, or an army of ghosts, or Death Star blueprints, anything, we'll take it. If we're still, you know, alive in a few days, we'll try and broadcast again, but until then, just keep on hoping. So not exactly we will fight on the beaches, huh? Is that not inspirational enough about the impending doom? Well, I thought it was inspirational. Look, we have to stop the Dean. I wouldn't be getting my Christiana Monporon if that wasn't the most important thing there is, but the girl who thought all she had to do to save the world was get a webcam and be all damned women of Gondor. She doesn't live here anymore. I'm a realist now. I'm glad to hear that. Because if you're planning to stay here and save the world, then we need to establish some ground rules. Ground rules for saving the world. <laughs> One. No more keeping secrets about vast supernatural conspiracies. That's fair. Two. No more gallivanting off on dangerous missions. Okay, we don't gallivant. Uh, that's... You run by any plan Impossible. or activity that you intend to undertake by me for safety assessment. And you will wear any Plate safety armor. gear I deem necessary. Dad, I am not wearing a biohazard suit again. Why am I not surprised this was a thing? So I'll just be anywhere but here. You <clears throat> must think I'm ridiculous, what with your sex, blood, and rock and roll attitude. But this is my job. Making sure that she is is safe for as long as possible. And how do you plan on doing that? By locking her up in a tower? It's a thought. Hmm. Be something with really high walls. Yeah, like a deep moat, maybe? Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. yeah, maybe one of those man-eating dragons to guard mm. Oh, no, they're collaborating. Mm. I don't know. She's always had a knock for finding trouble. Oh, don't I know it. <laughs> when she was five... She tried to rally her kindergarten class against the evils of Princess Culture. They're, they're it was bonding. No less then. I bet. Oh. See, which is why I don't understand why you would have her stay here instead of coming home with me. You think it was my idea? What? She, she, oh, she told her to go. She did not dig her heels in until after her little oh. chat with you. Trust me. If she were listening to me, you'd both be on your way back home. Yeah. What? Yeah. That. 
is unexpected. Thank, thank you. Did she really try to start a kindergarten uprising? Oh no, they're gonna be talking. <laughs> Lots of talking. Ooh, fantastic. And there she was, just pigtails and all, and she says, I have proof, Mr. Vice Principal, that you have been embezzling from the fourth grade candy gram funds. You're kidding. I didn't even know the word embezzle when I was in fourth grade. In fact, there was a picture of her in the local newspaper that I think in the trailer. I in my wallet. I remember uh, this. Yeah, no, that's her preschool pageant right there. I'm just showing her and Alyssa some photos. Some baby. Oh, oh God, this is what an aneurysm feels like. Oh, come on, don't be embarrassed. Oh, that's her little lady no, 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 no. I watched the trailer a lot. You, you have to help LaFontaine with the, the thing. science power tool. The thing. Just, just go. <laughs> Oh, look at Carmilla's shit-eating shit -eating grin. I don't know what you're getting all pink and huffy about. You mean besides the mortification? He's proud of you. Which is amazing when you're five. At 19, he could start treating you're me kidding? like an adult, you know? I love... I don't want to make my father proud. The only father I ever had saw me as an inconvenience until I was old enough to be traded as chattel, so... I can't really um. empathize with embarrassing wallet photos. Carm, I... I didn't think of that. Nah, it's okay. It's not something you have to. Do. I know, but no, it is because we're friends now, right? Yeah, sure. <laughs> friends. She is really not on board with this friends yeah. thing. Friends, you know, people who care when their callous attitude hurts the other one's feelings. What, you... what is she talking about? Is this because I wanted you to leave? Oh. No. Yes. Yes! Do you know that felt after oh. everything? It was to keep you safe. Which is all you've been saying you've wanted to do for the past two months <laughs> when you've moped around embroidering firefly diamonds. Very good point. Movies. And then you didn't even go. Oh, sorry, so my post traumatic revelation was inconveniently timed for you. Your post your Oh, you mean how you're a realist now? Yeah. A, a realist? Really? Well, it's better than being a, you're just lying to yourself about that. A, a what? Smug? Your faces critical, are getting closer. Superior. Delusional. Condescending. Tightly wound. Narcissistic. Do it. Uncaring. Nerdy. Nihilistic. Little little it's gonna happen? Dead. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Such an ass crap. Oh, it just got really soft. Hello, Natasha's tongue. <laughs> what the? Who the frick would? When did the library get a freaking landline? And who the frick got the number for that landline? And this better be life or death. I swear to God. Uh, oh my God, Betty. We're getting doomsday broadcast. I'm sorry, what? Those symbols you're whining about? They aren't Sumerian. They're proto Akkadian. They mean shepherd and sword. So I'm pretty sure your second talisman is the light you put your knife to Drizilla dropped in the angry fish pit. Oh! Probably should have seen that coming, but. Uh, yes, I see. Okay, um. Again, I will I will check this out later, uh, at a later date, when I watch it again. I'm sure all these people are very talented. I just uh, need to need to keep going on this. Um, <clears throat> I uh, I think I, I, I understand or have a, a small idea why people <laughs> might have uh, been excited to see what uh, my reaction might be with with this episode. Oh, that was, that was satisfying. <laughs> um, it, it did, did play a little bit on, on a, on a trope where, uh, people with, uh, a strong attraction for each other get into a heated argument in which their faces get closer and closer. And then finally at the peak of the argument, they just start making out. Uh, but that is, that is a trope I can get behind. That was, that was well done. 
Oh, that was really hot. <laughs> um, it just, and it was so beautiful. Like, I mean, the first part of the, the makeout was, was sort of this desperate, it's been so long and I need you. And then it, it, it got slow and soft and sweet and Natasha's tongue. <laughs> It, it actually uh, reminded me of when Elise and Natasha uh, came on to the Gay Women's Channel um, Pillow Talk Monday and they did the Never Have I Ever game. And Natasha was explaining uh, how Elise is a little bit of a germaphobe and uh, explained one time she asked Elise to, to borrow her chapstick and Elise asked her to use her, her finger. And Natasha replied, Elise, my, my tongue has been in your mouth. <laughs> so that that line just kind of flashed in my brain when I saw um, <clears throat> Natasha's tongue at the end of the kiss. Um, that was really cute, though, uh, with uh, Carmilla and Laura's father kind of bonding there. I I doubt if he still if, if he approves of her as a as girlfriend material, but. Uh, at least he's, he's warming up to her, I think. He's, he's definitely warming up. Um, I actually really enjoy, I, 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 I thought that was a nice touch with uh, Carmilla's background um, about her father and how things were when she was alive. Um, it, was, it was really kind of casually thrown in there, but I, I thought it was a really nice touch uh, to, to kind of show the difference, differences of when, when Carmilla was Laura's age. Uh, then Betty! Betty Spielsdorf, everyone! I did not expect that, did not see that coming. Uh, but I'm actually really excited. I, I think that's, that's also a really nice touch to, to uh, bring back Betty from season one, uh, who is now attending Princeton, and we get a little more insight into how Betty might be. But, uh, all right, the next talisman is the Blade of Hoster, that sword Carmilla used in season one. So that's still in the pit, which I assume is super crowded with uh, the Dean's minions because that's where they're all digging for the gates. So there's probably going to be a dangerous trip down into the crater. I'm sure Laura's father will not be happy about that. Uh, great episode! Um, I'm probably going to watch that particular scene several times. Forever. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure it's not the last makeout session we'll get uh, this season on Carmilla. Um, so looking forward to the, new, the next ones, but uh, until then, I may just watch that scene a couple more times before I dive into the next episode. So, uh, See you next video. Ah, oh, that was so nice. That was so nice.